and I want to thank the uh, the association as well for uh, having us here tonight. If I can get my computer to behave, uh, I'll be able to do this. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, Margaret Jackson, who's handing out uh, copies of the presentation uh, right now, uh, has been my right arm in trying to get out before city councils and making sure we get presentations out and questions answered and the like. So if you can't get a hold of me later on, if you have questions, make sure you ask for Margaret. Uh, we work as a team uh, on these presentations and, and on the follow-up. So before I get started, I just uh, want to point out that uh, uh, the facility that you've just gone through here uh, was uh, constructed starting in 1896 with the construction of the crib out in Lake Erie and it wasn't completed until 1926. So it was a 30 year construction project to really complete this whole facility and, and uh, get it in, into operation. Uh, one of the most remarkable features of this facility is the treated water reservoir, which is under the lawn in the backyard. And I'm sorry it's uh, dark so light these days, or so uh, early these days, because uh, if you went out there, it looks like you know about six football fields or something like that. And uh, underneath it is the largest underground storage reservoir uh, in the United States. And this is what the inside of it looks like, the picture on the left there. Uh, it's only been drained twice that we know of. And uh, so uh, and I was fortunate enough to get inside of it uh, when it was drained in 1994 uh, the last time. OK. Uh, Cleveland Water has got a vision, and that is that we're vital to our region's quality of life. And I think when we had the blackout, uh, everybody realized uh, the real truth behind that statement. And uh, so our mission is to deliver a reliable supply of high quality water and customer services to promote, promote the public health, safety, economy, and quality of life in Greater Cleveland. And uh, to further that mission, we've got really four goals in mind in our, in our strategic business plan. And that is that we pay at primary attention to our product, that water quality is paramount in everything we do. Secondly, that our customers are our number one asset. If we don't have customers, there's no reason to exist. Number three, that the people, the 1,200 people that staff the division of water are extremely important to the delivery of our service and our product. And last but not least, we can't do any of this unless we're financially viable. So it's important that we do have adequate rate structure and revenues uh, to keep your water system uh, one of the finest in the country. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit about the water system before I uh, return to Ken's lead about the water service agreements, just so you understand a little bit about uh, what we're up against. We have four water intakes that lie two and a half uh, to three and a half miles offshore. Uh, the five mile designation is the actual distance from the intake to the pumping station so, and, and of the tunnel itself. Uh, the beauty of having four intakes is that we can lose any one of them and still provide water uh, without missing a beat uh, to everybody. So that we're totally interconnected with the system. So should there be, you know, God forbid, the oil spill or some unusual algae bloom or uh, another a tunnel collapse or, you know, other disasters you know, too numerous to mention, uh, we would still be able to provide water to Greater Cleveland. Uh, the facilities we have and the, uh, the rest of the redundancy uh, comes through the four tunnels, uh, the, the uh, main pump stations, our treatment plants, uh, the five primary pump stations that pump water uh, throughout our 640 square mile service area, uh, 11 secondary pump stations, 400 miles of trunk mains or transmission mains. These are mains that are greater than 20 inches in diameter. Uh, approximately 5,000 miles of distribution system and 21 storage tanks and reservoirs. Uh, the topography of Greater Cleveland provides uh, a few challenges to uh, how we deliver water. Let me know where I should stand so I'm not in your way. Okay. okay. Um, uh, much of the west side is at a relatively uh, flat elevation, but as we get into the eastern suburbs, we get to higher and higher elevations. Uh, so we go for anywhere from uh, just under 600 foot elevation to nearly 1,300 feet uh, 
in elevation with our system. And so we have numerous pumping districts that are used uh, to provide service uh, throughout Greater Cleveland. Uh, the water main grid, this is the transmission grid, the 400 miles of water pipe uh, that serve water uh, and interconnect our treatment plants and our pumping stations uh, and really provide the backbone of our redundancy. Uh, the way we uh, treat water or deliver water is of course to take it out of the lake, to pump it uh, up to one elevation, treat it, in some cases pump it to another elevation before we treat it. Some of the water flows by gravity and then the rest of the water is treated to higher and higher elevations in the system using storage tanks and reservoirs further out uh, into the system. Uh, many of you probably have noticed the Parma Reservoir, which is actually in Parma Heights, uh, which is our biggest secondary uh, reservoir uh, in the suburbs, 23 million gallons. On Green Road in Warrensville Heights, we have another 20 million gallons. Uh, over on the, on the uh, west side uh, in Middleburg Heights, uh, we've got the Engel Reservoir and Pump Station there. And then further out uh, at the higher elevations, we have somewhat smaller facilities, uh, anywhere from half a million gallons to about 10 million gallons a reservoir scattered in the system. And uh, most of these have got a small pump station associated with them as well. 